This video looks at the symbolism surrounding crooks, and it takes just the first couple of pages of chapter 4 of Of Mice and Men. An obvious point is to consider the symbolism of his name. Steinbeck could call crooks crooks because he symbolises all black men, and therefore he's giving him a name that stereotypes how black men are seen at the time as all potentially criminal. In contrast to this, Steinbeck uses what would in his time have been the politically correct term for a black man, a Negro. Um, if you visit America now, the politically correct term is African American. So Steinbeck neatly shows us the racism of the time and also contrasts it with his own lack of racism. Then he reveals Crooks's social status. He's not allowed in the bunkhouse. He belongs in the stable. And this um, reference to him as a buck, as a male deer, suggests that he's seen as less than human in many ways in this masculine society on the ranch and by implication in the wider society of America. And this is the society that Steinbeck is attacking through his portrayal of crooks. He is still in bondage as the horses are, which is why he's attached to this word, the harness. So he's still controlled as horses are controlled uh, with reins. This imagery of containment is also picked up with the description of the room. The room is little, it's square, designed without imagination, uniform, and it's also narrow, and then described uh, as box-like, or at least his bunk is. All these images suggest how Crooks is trapped in a tiny space, and symbolically, this is the tiny space allowed to black people in a white society that is racist. But then, Steinbeck introduces a surprise. This um, box is filled with straw on which his blankets are placed. In other words, this is a description of his bed, and Steinbeck deliberately uses an allusion to the manger on which Jesus was laid when he's born. Jesus, born in a stable, um, placed in a manger, and this, of course, is where Crooks is. He is in the barn, in the stable, with the horses. He has a manger, a box filled with straw. So there are several possible interpretations here. Is Crooks presented to us as a possible saviour? In other words, if the reader is astute in the 1930s uh, to this imagery, they will see Crooks as a way of delivering other readers from racism. Steinbeck is trying to save us from racism. Uh, another way, of course, is to see it as an attack on Christianity. If Jesus died to save us and make us uh, better people through his teaching, then he has clearly failed because Steinbeck and his readers live in a racist society in which people are oppressed because of their colour every single day of the week and day of the year. And another possibility is to try to show that Crooks is in fact superior to the other men on the ranch. The next thing Steinbeck does is point out how many things in Crooks's room are broken, uh, just as he is. So the harness is broken, the leather is cut into strips, and uh, this returns us to the description of Crooks with his crooked back. Um, he has been, in some ways, broken. Uh, again, perhaps by a racist society. Steinbeck keeps emphasising the point. So we have uh, broken pieces of harness, a split collar, a broken hane, another split. And uh, if you've been watching, you'll notice that the word harness has been mentioned three times here. Again, Steinbeck is labouring the point that Crooks is harnessed by a racist society. He's controlled, he's kept down. There is here another box, again a symbol of his containment, but this time it's an apple box, perhaps a subtle reference uh, to the temptation of Adam and Eve and the expulsion from Eden. So again we have to ask, why is Steinbeck using this Christian symbolism to describe Crooks? In God's eyes, of course, all men are created equal, 
there is no racism uh, in Genesis. There is no racism in um, the stories of Jesus in the New Testament. Indeed, Jesus goes out of his way um, to be kind to people who are not Jewish. In contrast here, the medicine for himself and for the horses is kept in the same place. And so Steinbeck is symbolically suggesting, much as he did with the word harness, that the role of the black man is the same status in society as the role of the horse, there to benefit other people. He is a workhorse. Steinbeck again points out Crooks's similarity to the other people on the ranch. He focus on the, focuses on the fact that Crooks is alone, and he's signposting to us here the central theme of his novel, um, which is about the effects of loneliness on human spirit and human actions. And you'll remember that's why the novel is set in Soledad, which is Spanish for alone or solitude. Steinbeck next uses Crooks's back symbolically. He points out that Crooks is a cripple, which makes him uh, permanent. He doesn't travel around. And he has more possessions than he could carry on his back. Um, this deliberate focusing on the back, which after all isn't needed in this sentence, it could have ended here, after carry, is to remind us that Crooks's uh, bad back is a symbol. Again, it's a symbol of what has happened to him from the weight of the oppression of white society. So his physical condition is a symbol for how black men are oppressed with this extra burden, this extra weight of racism. Next, Steinbeck introduces a series of carefully chosen possessions, each one symbolising something difficult, different about Crooks's state. We're going to concentrate on just a few of them. So the shotgun becomes a symbol of his need to protect himself. 1930s America, of course, is uh, infamous now for the number of uh, killings of black men by the Ku Klux Klan. Uh, they would be simply hanged in public places um, and the perpetrators would get away with it. So in this society he needs a method of self-defence and we might read a little further in here that he has a single barrel shotgun instead of a double barreled one, uh, perhaps as a symbol of his poverty. He can't afford the best weapon, but he still forks out uh, much of his wages for a very good one. He has books which symbolise his intelligence, but of course they also symbolise his loneliness. He turns to books because he doesn't have other people um, to talk to generally. And then there's this interesting use of the word to, where Steinbeck is starting to build a picture of crooks being different and perhaps superior to the other men on the ranch. The tattered dictionary uh, symbolises his poverty, he can't afford a new one, but also symbolises how well used it is. Crooks is a person who tries to improve himself. Um, much like the people who watch my videos, in fact, who are trying to find out things for themselves. Um, so he's self-directed like that, and he wants to become educated. And that's much more important to him because it gives him an advantage against other men's racism. It gives him a way of fighting back that is a mental rather than having to resort to his gun. Similarly, he owns a, cop a copy of the California Civil Code, uh, this is something that he would need in order to defend his rights, uh, perhaps over property or employment law. Um, but then we noticed it's dated in 1905, um, at least 30 years out of date um, when the novel is set, uh, so again suggesting his poverty. Now, if we focus on the word mauled instead of tattered, this doesn't just suggest his poverty, it also suggests uh, an area, sorry, a mood of desperation. He's desperately had to go through this, this book, so it implies symbolically, in order to defend his rights. It's something that he's had to do almost violently, which Mauled conveys. There is also a reference here to his morality. 
Um, being a man, he has dirty books, presumably with pictures of women in. Uh, bear in mind this is the 1930s, and they wouldn't have been completely naked, but he only has a few. In other words, um, he's a typical man in some ways, but actually much less um, lustful, and in Christian terms, much less sinful than other men. Now again, Steinbeck focuses on Crooks's intelligence. So the fact that he's given spectacles, presumably brought about by his reading, um, suggests that he is highly intelligent uh, and educated, and it's also a symbol of his disadvantage. It's another way in which his body um, is not perfect. Then we look at the fact that uh, Steinbeck has decided they should be gold-rimmed. So the gold here could be symbolic of uh, Crooks's desire to better himself, uh, but could also be symbolic of his wisdom. He sees things better, symbolically, than other people, because he has these gold-rimmed uh, spectacles. They're gold because they reveal something more precious. And this is also emphasised by the word large. Next we find out that Crooks is proud, and Steinbeck, through his description, has perhaps suggested reasons why Crooks should be proud. He's actually done incredibly well for himself, um, educating himself, defending his rights, uh, fighting a racist system. And then we see the effect of that on him. He is aloof. And one reason for this could be that he is black on um, a white man's ranch. He doesn't have other people to uh, talk to. But aloof also conveys um, a sense of his own self-importance. He also realises that he might be superior to other men. And then a final reason for his aloofness, of course, is that he can't afford to get too close to white men because they could turn on him at any time, as we shall see with Curly's wife and, to a lesser extent, George. We get a sense of Crooks fighting for whatever rights he can achieve, so racism alone would stop other people getting close to him, but he flips that on its head so that his aloofness demands that other people keep their distance from him. Uh, so he kind of makes a virtue out of their racism, the fact that they might want anyway to keep apart from him. He turns against them and suggests that he doesn't want them close to him. It's, in many ways, the only power he has. Again, Steinbeck emphasises the symbolic nature of his injury. So he has a crooked spine, um, heaped by the oppression of a racist world, and significantly he bends over to the left. Um, the left is always a sign of something not being quite right. That's why the word sinister in our language comes from the Latin word for left, sinistra. It's why when you're watching a film, it's incredibly rare for the hero of it to be left-handed. They will nearly always be right-handed, because in society we have an inbuilt prejudice against the idea of leftness instead of rightness. Next, Steinbeck emphasises Crooks's depth. So his eyes are deep in his head, and their gaze also has depth, as though there is real substance to Crooks. Um, there's real intelligence behind these eyes. But it also serves to show how deeply he's been affected by racism. So his eyes are sunk deep in his head, um, because, again, he's been suppressed. And then the glitter of intensity is not only an image of his intelligence, but also perhaps of anger. Um, so the intensity might not be a positive thing here either. Here, he uses the word depth again, or deep, to show how racism has affected him. He's lined not just with age, but with the effect of being oppressed. And that's why he doesn't just have wrinkles, he has black wrinkles. Now, logically, we know this because he's got black skin. But Steinbeck wants to emphasise that it's the blackness that is partly the cause of the deep lines. In other words, it's not just age that has caused his face to look this way and be so lined. 
it's a symbol of the struggle he has every day. And then in describing Crooks's lips, Steinbeck deliberately crushes a stereotype. So the stereotype, of course, would be for a black man to have quite big lips. But here, Steinbeck deliberately reverses it because his body is again symbolic of oppression. And that's why his lips have become thin through coping with pain. So that pain is physical, obviously, because of the crooked back. But because we know the crooked back is symbolic, uh, so are the pain-tightened lips. These are lips that are responding to the oppression of racism. The noises that Steinbeck introduces are also oppressive. So we've got the noises of horses eating, but Steinbeck focuses on their teeth champing. So we've got a metallic um, sound here, which is deliberately threatening. And that is echoed also in the rattle of halter chains. And you can see this description in nearly every chapter of Mice and Men. And it suggests how men are chained, uh, perhaps here to fate. And of course, Crooks's chain connects him to a racist fate, which is why his particular dream will never come true. The light in his room uh, is therefore also symbolic. It's small, suggesting perhaps um, how small a life he is permitted. And then instead of it being described as a bulb, it's described as a globe, which again, symbolically, suggests Crooks's world. And his world is therefore also small and meagre. It's what has been denied to him by the attitudes of white men. Finally here, there is a sense that Crooks can't escape the sense of uh, racism. He can't rise above it because society won't let him. And that's why both his hands are occupied with the symbolism of his bent back. So in one hand is a bottle of liniment, desperately trying to improve his position, and the other one is rubbing his spine, um, trying to give himself relief from pain. This is an image of Hooks, uh, Crooks being largely helpless. He just can't escape um, the effect of racism. If his crooked back becomes the symbol of racism, then this final description is quite interesting. He flexes his muscles against his back, so against racism, but it appears he fails, which is why he shivered. So by the end of this description, we are left with a degree of hopelessness for Crooks. We don't expect him to be able to triumph against the racism of society. Later in this chapter, he will be offered the opportunity to do so when Candy and Lenny are discussing the Dream Ranch that they will be in a position to buy. But as you know, by the end of the chapter, he withdraws from this because he perceives how vulnerable his position would be when Curly's wife threatens to have him killed and the men can do nothing about it because a racist white society will not believe that he could possibly be innocent or will not care whether or not he's innocent. They'll simply hang him because he's black. And so Crooks rejects that vulnerability and retreats back to his stable and to his permanence. It seems then that the only place he can escape racism is within his own room. Nobody got any right in here but me. And it is Crooks' rights as a black man that uh, most concerns Steinbeck. And it's why he's brought Crooks into the novel. After all, if Crooks hadn't been created, the tragedy of the novel would exist exactly in the same way. Lenny would kill the mouse. He would take hold of the girl's dress in weed. He'd kill the puppy. He'd kill Curly's wife. George would kill him. Everything would unfold exactly the same way. And Steinbeck does that deliberately to show us that Crooks is included specifically to attack racism in his society and hopefully to change it through um, a realistic presentation of Crooks and a symbolic presentation of him as superior to the white men who treat him so badly. So if you have got this far... 
uh, congratulations and thank you for watching. Um, but now it's time to test yourself on what you've learned. So here's the Californian Civil Code. Can you remember what it was that it symbolised about crooks? Next we'll see another symbol. The single barrel shotgun. Can you remember what the shotgun symbolised and also what its single barrel symbolises? Let's look at another image. Here is the liniment bottle. Um, again that's tied into his need to alleviate pain but what does that mean symbolically? This is a severe form of scoliosis, the hunched back. Um, what does that symbolise about crooks? And finally, two symbols in one, crooks' books and his gold-rimmed spectacles. So you've got a symbol for the books, you've got a symbol for the spectacles, and you've got a symbol for the gold rings. Good luck with your exam, but of course you won't need it now. You're an expert on crooks. Thank you very much for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you like it, and subscribe if you'd like more.